This may be the real deal. I was browsing Amazon and I found this amp here. This is the TS Power Encore TS1-6000D. This is a 6,000 watt max power mono subwoofer amplifier and it is impossibly cheap. My plan was to show you the fuse rating, do the big dummy math, poke fun at the BS power ratings and work in a lot of max power clips for comedic effect. Well, that was the plan. <laughs> until the amp arrived. This thing is an absolute monster. It's huge. Here it is next to a JP23. The TS power is a tad bit longer. That's mostly due to the end caps that protect the connections, but otherwise the two amplifiers are about the same size. They both weigh nearly the same, coming in at just under nine pounds. Just looking at the outside, this amp gives hints that it may be a serious powerhouse, which is a bit perplexing because typically when an amplifier gives a max power or a peak power rating, that means two times the actual RMS rating. So this might be a 3000 watt amp. That JP23 can easily exceed 3000 watts, but in my own test, I was never able to get that much out of it because I don't have the capacity on my test bench. I might not be able to test this amp. Who will win in the epic battle of current voltage and resistance? The twin power base power supplies or the TS Power Encore TS 1.6000D? There's only one way to find out. Let's check out the connections while we hook it up to the amp dyno. The first thing that jumped out, the set screws are Phillips head, not Allen head, like most amplifiers seem to be. That's good because you don't have to dig around for the correct hex key. Phillips head screwdrivers tend to cam out and oftentimes they will strip the screw. So that's a bit of a double-edged sword. The zero gauge inputs are just a tad bit oversized. I had no problem fitting this beefy down for sound zero gauge wire into the terminals, but the terminals were just a tad bit shallow. I ended up trimming the wire just a little bit so that I wouldn't have any exposed wire sticking out of the terminal. Hey, check this out right here. Here's a neat touch. The positive connection has a little battery emoji. That's gonna lower the odds of hooking it up backwards. The amp has dual speaker outputs, but it is a one channel amp. This is just a second pair of connections to make it easier to hook up a second subwoofer in parallel. On the other side, there is a protect light and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack style plug for the bass knob. This is kind of odd. The bass knob itself uses a telephone cord style connector. I didn't know telephone cord to 3.5 millimeter was a thing. Apparently it is. The amp has four RCA plugs, two inputs, and then two plugs, one for bridge in, one for bridge out. That tells us that the amp is strappable. In other words, you can bridge this amp with a second TS1.6000D for more power. The amp has another cool feature that I'll show you right after the 4 ohm amp dyno. For these dyno runs, what we're going to do is keep our eye on this LED right here. When it turns red, we hit 1% total harmonic distortion. That gives us a certified result. In this case, 529 watts. Rolling on up to clipping, we get 539 watts. In a perfect world, if we half the resistance, we double the power. That means we could get just over a thousand watts into two ohms and a possible 2000 watts into one ohm. But the world is not perfect. If we were gonna hit those two and 3000 watt numbers that we're looking for, we would need to see something a bit closer to eight or 900 watts going into four ohms. Things are not looking good for our big bad amplifier. Check out the controls on the amp. It has all the normal controls you would expect, the gain, a low pass crossover, and a bass boost. It also has an infrasonic filter, also known as a subsonic filter. And check this out, this is a cool feature. You can adjust the bass boost frequency. If you've watched my channel at all, you know I'm not a big fan of bass boost, but when you add the ability to adjust the frequency, that changes things. Now it's a single band parametric EQ, and that's really cool. I've noticed this feature is becoming a lot more common, and it's kind of cool to see it on an amp at this price. Before we run the two ohm test, let's talk fuses. Over on my fuse block right now, I've got a pair of 150 amp mini ANL fuses in the hopes that we can hit 3000 watts. It'll pull every bit of 300 amps if it can hit those kind of numbers. But neither the Amazon description nor the owner's manual mention anything about the fuse rating. So I jumped on the old internet and did some research. I couldn't find much about these amplifiers. I was able to find one YouTube video that showed a 5,000 watt max power TS power amplifier. That amp had five 30 amp onboard ATC fuses, 
so we would expect it to give us something close to 1500 watts. So I'm really not sure what to make of it. This amp should do more than that because it's supposed to be a bigger amp. Here's that two ohm run. We get 924 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion and 951 watts at clipping. So it really doesn't look like we're gonna be able to hit that 3000 watt number, much less the 6000 watts of max power. Two things before we do the one ohm test. The first thing, let's check out the amp guts. And the second thing is I'd like to invite you to become a channel member. Channel members get special recognition in the form of icons and emojis when they comment on videos. Now, I'm not an amp technician. So I'm not really qualified to say much about all these parts and components on the amp board and how they work. I mean, we've got some capacitors, we got some resistors, we got some transformers. All looks kind of cool to me, but I don't know what any of it does. If you're an amp technician or know anything about amp guts, please jump in the comments and tell us what you think about what you see up on the screen right now. Here goes that one ohm test. We get 409 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion. That is a respectable number given the price. This is well under 10 cents per watt. But the sad part, that number isn't even a fourth of the big numbers slapped on the top of the amp. I will never understand why brands can't just give us accurate power ratings. In this day and age where there's probably a couple dozen people on YouTube testing amps and posting the results, it's really kind of foolish to give us inflated power ratings. Let's run it on up to clipping where we get 1,454 watts. But that number's not valid. As soon as the clip light turned on, the power supplies went silent. Sure enough, they've gone into protect. Even though the test is invalid, I think it's still safe to call BS on the number on the outside of the box. The trend we've seen of the test so far tells us that it's very doubtful this thing can hit 3000 watts, much less 6000 watts of max power. Even though the results aren't valid and the power ratings are exaggerated, the amp still provides some really good bang for the buck. To see more amp tests, click right here. Before I go, I need to say thank you to all of my patrons, especially $25 patrons, Bo, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, Jonas, Sean, David, and Vava. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.